Cool. All right, I think we are ready to roll. So, let's talk about, so, um, Sudhanshu, I wanted to say, I done, I went and, uh, I went and checked out some of the stuff we'd talked about on the, um, uh, the, the accuracy yeah, the accuracy yep. score stuff. I saw um, that. Cool. The phase, it was merged, yeah. Yeah, so, yes. Um, so we have one, it looks like there's one bug left there. Um, yes. I do, I am a little, let's see, there is, you know, I think I think there's one issue right now, actually. Um, okay, crap, I just realized this. So, that flower example, uh, yeah. it has to be provided with this coder. The flower example, and then also, where did that... Where did okay now I can't do two computers. All right, okay. Um I'm like looking on the wrong computer. Okay. So uh, where is what I wanted? Okay. Uh, I think I put a work in progress protocol. No, did I not do that? I thought I put that work in progress progress uh, with the with the test doc string. Okay, crap. Okay, and this is the one. So basically, I think this is a problem um, because we may not be testing the doc strings right now, I just realized, um, because there was this that got messed up. Um, okay, and then this, for some reason, is our train source. Expecting. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, so I think if you want to take a look at that, I think so. You, you you'll take a look at that issue. Um, so um, phase eight merged. Okay, so yeah, and great job with that. Um, so yeah, all I had to do was just uh, uh, pull in some changes from master and stuff, and then I just went ahead and merged it. So um, let's see. So. Okay, um, so let's, we need to, um, uh, flower 17, um, flower 17 fixes, um, Um, so actually staging, uh, ensure duck tests pass. Um, so we need to figure these guys out. Um, okay, so, look at it. uh, well, so, and, and, and this, this is, okay. So this is the main, the, the main problem is that the, um, you know, the doc tests are not, the, the doc tests are not active on the master branch um and so they may be failing within theirs because uh yeah this line got i refactored this line incorrectly somehow um so let's see and now i'm trying to now we tried to put it back and then it didn't work when it got put back so i'm not sure why uh, especially because this url with this archive should not have changed at all um so uh, curious um but we'll I'll have to take a look at this and then I'll let you know um, and uh, and but hopefully you're still in progress on this flower 17 so I'll try to do that after this meeting um, yeah. okay so do you have anything else you want to talk about today uh, yes so I have a PR ready but okay. uh, I want to ask some few questions regarding the clustering model okay so the PRs okay so clustering okay and uh, also, I want to ask uh, a few questions about operations. Okay. Yep. Clean up operations, which I will be writing. Okay. All right. So, did I capture everything there? Yep. Great. All right. So, Sahil, uh, what do you want to talk about today? My operations of uh, archives and compression are ready for like. They are almost ready for merge. I just need a final review on that. 
Okay. And uh, the lint commit issue, I tried a lot, but haven't been able to fix that Mac OS child watcher error. Other than that, I, I was done with it. There's one more thing to implement, and it would be ready for months. Okay, cool. So actually, you said that change that uh, get extension call to use Arglobe instead of Git ls. But uh, actually, what happens in that case is we track a lot less files than uh, what Arglobe would give us in mm. parts. So uh, we would end up slowing up the slowing down the process. Okay, by, and it's by by considerable amount of time. So okay, it would be very slow. Because it actually generates a lot of permutations and combinations of those paths and stuff. So it's like a cross product between. The, All right. Uh, so mutations and body mutations. And yeah. Mutations. So so can we just go through and cut off the or like can can we just can we change the way the mutation like so your validation the the way that your validation works right now is you know that the way that the functions work to validate um, is is tied to this. Um, extensions right because you're taking every part of the path and adding every possible extension to it so could you just change the validation to you know look at the look at the um look at the uh, you know you're splitting it on colons and then you you, you ver verify that that path exists yes all right so that might be an so, approach to go with that's what we do right well it looks like um, it looks like right now here. Let me just pull it. Up. Um, okay, you know we'll we'll just so. What else do you want to talk about today? And then these are the two only. Two okay, great. Okay, so we'll 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 get that in a second. All right. Um, all right, so Hashim, how's it going with you? Hey, it's going good. How about you? Good. Um, I made the changes to uh, the Ensemble notebook, and I think uh, it's good now. Okay, great. Um, I also created another notebook uh, for saving and loading models. Okay, great. Um, and uh, I also wanted to ask, uh, like, what are stances on the config, uh, mutable config? What the status is? No, like, what the stance is? Like, how will we proceed with that? All right. Okay, great. Uh, anything else? Um, yeah, uh, I uh, I just ran the tests on uh, the testing script stuff. Uh, added the matplotlib into requirements that uh, dev requirements, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm waiting on the tests right now. We are running. Okay, great. Let's see. Perfect. So, um, so the actually staging flower seventeen fix. So you're gonna work on that. Um, do you, you you just saw that right? So no comments on that. Yep, I will work on that. Okay, great. Um, okay. OK. 
Okay, so second question, more questions. Um, okay. Okay, let's see. Um, so let's st let's start with Hashim stuff today. Um, so. Which one of these should we start with, Hashim? I think uh, you should start with Ensemble. Okay. All right, so, and then not comments, okay. Test pass. Let's see, okay, so we have that auto SK line thing, so that's whatever. Um, Okay, great. Do you want me to share the notebook? Ah, uh, that's okay. I can download it. Um, okay. Um, okay. Let's just do that GHPR checkout. Eleven thirty four. All right. Uh, so I ended up assembling a classifier and a regressor. Okay. Uh, you know, just as an experiment, uh, and I think uh, that works with our tutorial as well. And uh, the real issue was uh, that I was using uh, a regressor as the meta model, uh, and uh, when I used a classifier, uh, the accuracy went up. Uh, because uh, the data set we're using uh, can be used for both regressors and uh, classifiers, but classifiers work better on that. Okay. Examples where... Examples, notebooks, and so on. And we're still using the same data set. All right. Cool. All right. So we load the data set. It's at wine one. Split the data. Great. Okay. Following the steps to assemble by stacking. Train first level base models on train data. Use the first base models to get predictions on validation data and test data. Okay, the dogs are going to freak out here. Um, we simply use the high level predict function to get the predictions and store those predictions in lists. Stack all the validation predictions together and then stack the test predictions together. After this, we'll have two arrays consisting of stacked validation predictions and stacked test predictions. Build and train. Okay, so let's see. So let's just talk about. Okay. Stacking technique to insular. Stacking. I'm trying to, let's see. Stack all the validations figure and stack. So after this, we have two arrays consisting of two stacked validation predictions and two stacked text predictions. Okay, so when you say two stacked, okay, so this is train. Okay, so then for each model, right? Yeah, for each model. So stacked. Let's see, let's see for each model. So you predict, you say validation prediction one. So this is your, when you say stack all, 
or sorry, simply use high level predict functions to give predictions and store these predictions with lists. This we have two arrays containing stack validation predictions and stack. So stacked. I'm trying to make sure that I'm just trying to verify that our bullet points map um, uh, logically. So use the first base level models to give predictions. Okay, so maybe we should turn these into a little numbered list here too. Um, this is. Okay. Go back. Go back. There we go. Okay. So one, two. Okay. So two. We'll simply use the high-level prediction to get the predictions. Okay. Unless. Okay. So here's the predictions. Okay. Um. Great. And then. Stack predictions now. Stack of predictions. It's dictionaries. Two lists. Ten stacked validation predictions and the stack test predictions. Okay. And up here we said the same thing. Great. And build and train level two meta model. This model should be a linear model, linear regression or SVM or preferred stacked valid predictions. And it will serve as features to train our two level meta model. Okay, so now we train stacked service to meta model. Great classifiers clearly up from regressors on the data we we're using. So let's use a classifier to build our meta model. This demo. Okay. So let's see here. So and this is the um, okay. So six two models. Just one model. Right, superior predictions. This is our data can we use classification and regression stress. We'll use both to make an ensemble model to show how it performs. Okay, our models are ready to be trained. Okay, we're da, 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 da. Okay, so you took two models. Classification model performs better. Okay, so now we can. Okay, we're going to combine them. And perfect. Great. Okay, and that's where you got the classifiers clearly up from the rest of the data we're using. So, Scikit SVC. Okay, so we're going to use Scikit SVC to do the stacking. That's what you're saying. So for the ensemble model, I mean, um, experiments. That's great. Final predictions, perfect. Okay, great. This looks awesome. Uh, any comments from anyone? We can. Looks really nice. Cool. Great. I like it. I um, think. Uh, you can remove the OS because I was using it for the reasons I think. The OS? What do you mean? Import OS. Import OS. Sorry. Oh, import OS. Oh, okay. Um, oops. Let's just double check here. Import OS. Oops. I accidentally changed async IO. Huh. Right, OS. All right, great. Good catch. Okay, save that, we run everything. Uh, uh oh, my last day. Is it running? Uh, 
Can I import name path from map? Follow up. Okay, well, it's mad about that then. All right, so let's just double check here. So what's going on? Okay, we don't want to change that. Okay, so this, okay, so, So now this is what we're looking at here. So remove OS, make that numbered list, and then, okay, so this guy was missing a in paren. Okay, um, the missing of the in paren is concerning um, because that means that the test cases may not be working as intended. Um, so let's see. Um, all right, so let's double check. So, or else maybe this would, the, the test cases are coming in a different PR here. So that's probably what's going on. Right. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So we probably need to, yeah, we probably should have done these test, uh, things as a, that their own PR. So, um, the evaluating model performance, what is this one done? What's the deal with this one? Yeah, I just added uh, matplotlib to the requirements dev, and uh, it's running the CI test okay. right now. Okay, so let's see what happens with this one. So, Okay, so yeah, I'm getting the same same error about the um, lack of, or let's see, wait a minute. Okay, so, all right, so yeah, we were missing a paren there. Okay, so we'll wait on the, let's, let's take the, uh, so let's, Let's see. So, so let's see. Okay, where is this? Ensemble notebook PR looks good. Um, need to make sure it's being tested before we merge. Uh, so, we'll merge um, the. Which one was this? the evaluated model performance PR with tests first. Okay. Um, any other comments on this one while we're at it from anybody? All right. Um,
All right, uh, examples, notebooks, and symbol by stacking. Uh, all right. All right, um, and all right, great. Um, so let's we'll push that up, and then um, okay. So so what's next here? Great. Um, so saving and loading models PR. So how are we doing here? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, uh, created a model and uh, trained it and then uh, we started the kernel to you know show that uh, if you load it again and if the model was trained before you can use it cool okay. all right so let's see Notebooks, right example. Oh, examples, notebooks. What do you say? That's great. That's funny. Uh... Great. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. So the one thing is, okay, so we're using this wine quality again. Um, uh, sigma. we really need to get that s test train split stuff into sources. Um, okay. Test model. Load the same model. Uh, da, 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 da. okay. Load data set. I think, let's see. Yeah, we can do a top level. I'm realizing we can do top level weights here. So do we really need this load data set function? Um, nah. Okay, um, yeah, it's whatever. Okay. And you have to do the nest async IO apply again, so that's good to know. Um, so you can't. 
So the okay, yeah, you have to re-download because you're in a new environment. Are you in a new environment when you do this, or? Uh, yeah, you're in a new session. Okay, you're in a new session because you restarted the kernel. All right, cool. Um, <clears throat> great. So let's. Any anybody comments on that? Saving and loading. It's pretty straightforward. So. Um, Great. Um, nice job figuring out how to get that working with the in IPython notebook. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then how are we proceeding on mutable, mutable config? Okay, so anything else on your end here? I, stood, I saw one more PR. Or no, we got them all, okay. Um, all right, so how are we proceeding on mutable config? Come on. Okay, uh, so the other testing PR passed on the tests, and it, uh, but it fails on macOS due to some dependency of XC Boost, I think. I don't know. Interesting. Um, it says you need to have some libompt.dy lib uh, for macOS X. Yeah, I think you're fine to that one. Is that matplotlib or something? What is that? Yeah, libompt. Oh, xgboost, that's right, yeah. Um, libompt. Let's just try to add that to the... Um, So, yeah, okay, so this is an interesting thing. So we just hadn't run into this because we hadn't used um, XGBoost on Mac OS yet. Um, uh, but it has an example, right? So shouldn't it be tested there? Uh, in the CI? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, it has an example. Uh, I don't know if it does. I don't think it was included in any documentation before. And also the OSX stuff, or let's see. Yeah, it wouldn't... Uh, it uh, it looks like it wasn't it wouldn't have been tested on Mac before, so let's see. Um, let's see. So let's try this. Requires libomp on OS X. Model XG boost. All right, so uh, we need to document this on install. E 
other places. All right, so 1141. Let's go ahead and throw it in the uh, uh, model actually boost. All right, so let's just put it here. XG boost on OSX requires um, lib OMP. All right. All right, we got it there. We got it there. All right, um, so let's see what happens then. That was the um, evaluating model performance. Okay, great. Oops. Um, so we needed live OMP on OSX. All right. Um, so how are we proceeding with mutable configs? So I think Saksham said he was going to take a look. Um, it looks like okay. So if you haven't you haven't heard from Saksham on this one? No. Okay, so let's ping him because he said he was going to take a look at that. So I think we're waiting on him. Um, so, uh, we, so Saksham uh, was going to okay. take... What? I said it's cool. Okay, cool. Uh, good. Um, so Saksham was going to take a look at the patch um, uh, and Hashim's comment and then uh, communicate to uh, Hashim and Sahil from there. Okay. So yeah, you'll, you'll, we'll get, um, we'll ping Sakshan on this. Um, Where's my autocomplete? I think it doesn't work with his name. Oh yeah, I, I, me before. yeah I thought okay, I thought I thought I had seen that before too. That's yeah, just you know, where is Sakshan? Yeah, I wonder why it doesn't work with Sakshan. Okay, what is his handle? It's Sakshan or one okay, yeah. And got him. All right, great. So followed up on that. Um, all right, so is that uh, okay? So mutable config. All right, is that everything on your side, Hashim? Yes, thank you. All right, great, thank you. All right, so, um, so Sahil, so let's uh, go over operations and archives for compression. Um, okay, so now link, link commit PR. All right, so I think that if you can't, you really, so we really shouldn't need to touch 
Um, okay, so I th I think that. Hmm. I saw that uh, changing the code to pass that test case, which is being caused by macOS error, is very like is going to take a lot of changes for that small thing instead of fixing that. We, are, we should not focus on that. Yeah. That. You could let's see. So um, this was caused by OS X something with child watcher. Um, just uh, unit test dot skip it for now on OS X. Does that sound good? Yes, actually, I was also looking into like policies and stuff. And if I like get around to fix it, I'll fix it. All right, great. Just need to know where the problem is because there are different loops in CMD and async test case as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of confusion that where is the child watcher is not hitting the loop. But yeah, yeah. Look into it. Yep. All right, great. Um, so then operations for archives and compression. So I was looking at this earlier today. Let's see. Okay. So, mm -hmm. all right. So, So I'm also wondering, I wonder, so I'm wondering if we should just be using unpack and unpack archive here, um, because it has a function which handles both of these. What? SSU has a function for this. Yeah, this one. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I actually we talked about it earlier also that if what? someone wants to add new formats, that then it would be a problematic thing. So you said that we should have different operations for different formats. And Let's see. Right, I'm just thinking about this as okay, yeah, so we should probably we probably should go with the separate ones because then we'll have I'm just all right, so so we thought process more modularity there. What? We have more modular code there, like if I want to just compress a single file, I can mm -hmm. use that operation or just pass yeah. it to it as you said. Yeah. So. Exactly. Um so 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 let's see. So the main thing here that I'm thinking about is the file, like sort of file names versus streams. Um, and as with the compression, so where, I don't think I saw the compression yet, okay. So, let's put a compression format here. Compress file format. Decompress. Okay. All 
get compression class, put a compressor format. Okay, dot XC. Okay, so input file path, output file path. All right, so all of this is very file based, um, which is good. Um, it's just if you're going to do compression as a part of it, you would ideally do it just using a stream, right? And then you would uh, stream the data from um, the uh, the arc, like if you're compressing an archive, if you're creating and compressing an archive, ideally you uh, create the archive and then compress it and then write it to disk. Um, so let's see. So as in we should also accept uh, some kind of stream handles sort of thing. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm trying to just think about this because we don't. We also don't want to overcomplicate this for now. So, um, so I'm trying to. Let's try to decide. So trade off here. So the one thing is, um, so we have we have output file. So we have a bunch of file paths involved here. So input file path and output file path. Um, okay. So and these are also too generic. So um, because uh, you know we want to make sure input file path is just any input file, right? Um, at this point. So. Uh, it, this is probably something like you know a compressed this is like a compressed file right um, let's see and I'm wondering so okay so how do I explain this? so um, okay so if we think about this um, so if you think about the the data flow stuff and and when, when you're thinking about the data flow stuff um, uh, it's, it's, you want to think about it like what pieces, so if you were to throw, so this is one, this is what happens. So basically if you take a bunch of these operations and you put them together, um, into a data flow, it'll try to automatically connect any of their inputs and their outputs. Um, and it does that by looking at the definition names. Um, so if we have input file path, um, then anywhere, any operation that accepts input file path will get automatically linked to any any input of type input file path. So, so if anything produces a input file path object, um, then, or a, 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 if anything produces or provides a input of type input file path of definition input file path, then it's going to be used there and auto linked there. Um, so we want to, we want to tread. So this is where you try to think about like the granularity, which, which you need to define things. Um, so if you were to put a bunch of things in a network, right. And they all took input file path, um, then you're going to end up with a automatically connected network of, you know, okay, so what provides, uh, you might have a, you know, you might give the network a input file file path, right? And do you really want it to go to every single operation that takes input file, like t that takes a file? Um, or do you want to be more specific than that? Um, so in this instance, uh, this might be an appropriate time to do like, you know, gzip input file path, right? Or and then bzip2 input file path and xz input file path because those are like, those are, um, those are slightly Can more... Can like compressed file and uncompressed file as well? compressed file and uncompressed file yeah so in this case yeah in this case where you're having the format as another object that's probably you know that's probably that's that's the right way to go yeah compressed file and un decompressed file right um because then you've you've clarified that this is 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 compressed right compressed data um so let's see yeah decompress uh, format because yeah also, currently we have no outputs in any of these so shall we return the output paths 
so that it can be connected to other. Uh, yes, you should likely return the output file path, right? And so what you're going to find is, is you changed it to compress file path and decompress file path is that your inputs to the decompression will become, um, you know, compressed file path and your outputs from the compression will become decompressed file path, right? And that way, if you threw an input and an output together, they would, I mean, they would automatically be linked together into sort of a, a, a you know, into a little infinite loop there, right? And but but I need output file path and inputs also, so would it create an infinite loop sort of thing? Well, you dis you dis you you disconnect them in the event that it's automatically created an infinite loop. Um, this is just to route things. So the the routing of things based on definition is is a is a helper utility, so that you aren't always um, so you aren't always manually defining everything. And the purpose is to you know if we correctly scope things, then putting operations that work on the same data together they get automatically connected um, for, you know, as, as an ease of use mechanism to the end user. Um, I can show you guys actually what, what all of this is all about. Um, it might be helpful. So, um, <clears throat> so uh, maybe I should just show you this right now because this might be a helpful thing. Um, Okay. Can you guys see this? Let's see. All right. Yes. Great. All right. So, so this is a um, this is the um, um, automating classification demo uh, data flow that is um, like editable um, in the browser. Um, so you can take the things and you can move them other places and stuff. Um, so you can reconnect things. So and and so the 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 reason why the reason why we try to define that the data flows with the particularly scoped definitions is so say you wanted to add a new operation of this and obviously I'm not done with that yet. So um, I just did this yesterday. So um, say you wanted to add a new. Um, uh, to add a new operation to this, right? Um, and it has something to do like, okay, it takes a branch. Um, so if I dropped it onto, like if I if I added it, right, say it was some kind of drag and drop thing over here, right? And I drop it into the, the map, um, into the graph, then it would automatically route anything that produces a branch to my new operation, right? Um, so it, it'll automatically connect it for me, and then I can reconnect it if I feel so inclined, right? Um, and so that's sort of the motivation behind this, uh, this the the way that we're scoping and naming definitions um, is to provide an, an ease of use mechanism uh, for for people who who drop these you know new operations onto the onto the the graph here. Um, Let's see, because this is a this is sort of one of the end goals, right? Um, to be able to provide a, a visual way to, to knit these things together. Um, so, anyways, that's the motivation here. Um, let me go back to this. Uh, so, resume presenting. Um, so, I think yeah, let's try to change it to compress file path and decompress file path, and let's make those uh, let's make that an output. Um, as well. So now that the one thing is, okay, so if we make an input, if we're making the input, yeah, this is the problem with using file paths. Um, okay, so the input file path and the output file path, and you want to have the option to specify the output file path. Um, okay. So you've had, okay, so in the, above you had optional yeah i was going to say that's what i was just saying above you have optional inputs but not here um so okay so you could take so this is the this is the thing right so you're going to get it 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 we need to try to create um you know the the goal is to create the the, the operations that will lead to as much reuse as possible right um so my my 
question here in my head is, do we do this, like I was saying, with, with streams, or do we do it with files? And I think that the best approach here might be the stream-based stream based approach, because that also solves our issue of the optional file path names and the fact that those would be linked back in automatically. Um, because if you said, you know, uh, decompressed file path and you took that as an input and you produced this as an output, then you're going to get that. Um, you're you're going to have that called again for you um, because everything with a different permutation gets called right now. Um, so, um, so I think let's maybe change this to a stream based approach. Uh, Only compression or the archiving part as well? Definitely the compression part. Um, the archiving part, let's see. The archiving part, let's see. Yeah, it would be great if we did this as a stream-based approach as well. Um, but the input, the output path, if you do the output path as a stream, um, let's see. Yeah, because you could accept... So if there are multiple files, there would be a problem. Well, with... We would need to open multiple handles in that case, something like that. Are you talking about input files? No, I'm talking about like, for example, if I want to extract an archive that has multiple files in it, or if I want to write multiple files to an archive. So, so if you want to extract an archive, you have to point it at a directory, though. So we'll, we'll have to take a, a output directory path. Um, so, OK, an input zip file path. OK, so that would be now. OK, with the, what happens if that's a stream? Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. So, let's... I think directories huh? things should go, like, uh, we should not go with streams in archives, but we can go with streams and, uh, compression ones. Yeah, yeah, let's, 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 let's do that for now here. Um, because we can always have, um, uh, you know, we can always have some intermediary operations to, to convert streams to files or vice versa. Or we will probably just create uh, file objects and extract, accept them as streams. So I, I would go with the, I would say that IO bytes is probably the type um, that you, I think the type hint, let's see, is there, where is, where is the right type hint for this? Uh, I can't remember. Oh yeah, binary IO. Okay, that's what it was. Um, generic IO any stream. Streams deprecated. Okay, what happened here? These types are also in the typing IO namespace, which was never supported by type checkers and will be removed. Um, okay, well then we don't need to worry about them. Or what's the deal? So deprecated are also in typing IO. Okay, so that's other concrete types. So what are we supposed to do for type hinting then? Um, okay, well, it doesn't necessarily matter too much because you're doing manually defined nef definitions. Uh, generic type. All right, whatever. Um, okay, so compression. Assume you're taking a stream. Um, for the inputs and you stream to the output. So yeah, input stream, compressed input stream, decompressed output stream. Um, and then you can create like, yeah, you you can create the Python objects and stuff in your test um, to do the correct streams. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, let's do that. And then, so the mock calls, what was going on here? So, okay, so this is your compression built in to open. Okay, let's. 
let's see, insert open has cause. Um, okay, it looks like, okay, so I think the one thing would be, it looks like, okay, so this is on result, okay, and where's the data flow, create data flow. Uh, da -da. Great. Um, I don't know, Ben. One tweet, one bad. I'm open, mark open. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, let's see. So then let's just double check this. So you've got your, say you have the location with the zip file. That's okay. Well, let's do tar gz um, comes in. You will, in the next phase, you'll make the data flow um, and you'll, okay, so you make the data flow and uh, you do the decompression of GZ. Um, so you'd look at the file, you're, you, you're doing stream decompression. So you open the file before you throw it to the data flow. Uh, you pass the stream as an input um, to the decompression and then the output of the decompression is, let's see, we would end up, would we pass a stream or would we create a stream? We'd probably want to pass a, Output of the decompression would be another stream object. We'd probably need to pass it in beforehand. This is not ideal. Um, so stream is not something that's very easily serialized or dealt with over the network. Um, it's fine, but it's not great. So... Yeah, I think you have to pass the stream as an input. You have to pass the stream as an input because you wouldn't just return a stream because then you'd be still writing to it somehow. Um, so for the lifetime operation, it uses the stream that it's passed to read from, the stream that it's passed to write to. Um, and... Okay, how's that going to work, though? Okay, so... If we take streams, so say say we have two streams, right, uh, and then and two operations. So we have the input stream and the output stream, and the output stream of the decompress um, goes to the input stream of the like the tar file extract, um, which is taking a file path. So you have to write the stream to disk. You have to write the stream to disk before you can call the tar extraction operation. If you, the tar extraction operation took a stream, then it would read the stream. It would read from the stream, which is also accepted as an input from the decompression operation. So those operations would get kicked off at the same time and it would just sit and wait and do an asynchronous read Okay, so that's the thing, is how do you do an ace? Okay, sorry. So what I'm trying to think, I don't know if you guys are following this, but so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to figure out um, if we kick off the way that the operations are executed, right? They get kicked off when an input of the, the correct data type is is present. Um, and so if you have two inputs, so if you, if you have this stream input um, that's being decompressed, like you're writing the decompressed data to the stream, and then the stream is also being used, um, you know, either as the stream is the file, which is accepted by the the the, the archive unpacking operation, um, 
then how does the archive oper unpacking operation like start reading that um, stream? Um, because in our world of async everything, it should really be some kind of asynchronous stream. Um, uh, it, it should really be some kind of asynchronous stream, but we haven't dealt with that yet. Um, so, to, 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 yeah, okay, so you might want to take, it should really be an asynchronous stream. Because um, if we kick off both these files, so it, the, the, here's the other thing. So what, if you take, say you had these two operations running on two different machines, right? You can't just pass an FD between the two of them, right? Um, when you create that stream object, um, this is why all the definitions have different primitives. So if you were to create that stream object, you would create some sort of stream, some, some so you'd say it might be like a TCP stream, right, between the two machines um, who the two operations are executing on, right? So one's executing the decompression and one's executing the archive on extract, right? Um, and so you need the, the stream, so it has to be asynchronous because the event loops that are running will, um, you know, we can't block the event loop um, based on an IO operation. Um, so we'd create the object at some sort of orchestrator scope um, and and feed it to each operation and they have to write to it asynchronously. So, um, or write, write and read using, or they have to read asynchronously. So um, in this case, so async yeah. IO has stream readers and stream writers, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So the main the main thing though is is becomes like okay, how do you integrate with the existing APIs that are? Um, let's see. So let's see. We're using info file and okay. So compression class. Uh, SHU to a copy file object. Okay, so this one's easy. You know, you just do like the you just do a write to the output stream. All right, so decompress taking a stream. Um, yeah, I mean we just remove the file file copy file object things um, because now you have an asynchronous um, some some kind of sort of asynchronous stream to deal with. All right, but the problem is now we have to introduce this concept of asynchronous streams, and this overcame complicates this project probably too much. Um, so, sorry, this is it's is we need to flush all this stuff out because um, that's sort of the point of it all, right? Um, I think that it probably sounds too complicated to do the stream thing because we don't want to do the stream thing wrong. Um, we don't want to do it in a way that, that needs to be changed later. Um, as I think what we found out here is that we need some kind of support for these. We need some sort of concept of this asynchronous stream, right? And like like you said, you know, what that would be is a, uh, well, let me bring up the page. What is that? Um, what is this? No. Um, what's the page for it? Um, yeah. So just like you just said, um, the transport services, the transporting protocols. Uh, where is that? Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. So reader dot read, writer dot write. Yeah. Okay. And then you wait. We all wait to flush. Okay. So, um, and what is this object that's returned here? Is it a protocol? Yeah, it returns a transport protocol pair. Okay, so this is likely what we'd end up with here is the um, happy eyeballs delay. <laughs> what? Okay. Um, so, okay. So, uh, yeah, so transport and then protocol. Is that correct? Yeah. So does a transport protocol to build is returned on success. So transport protocol. Um, so yeah, and then you await the reads. Okay. Um, 
Oh, it's drain, not flush. That's right. Okay. So, yeah, the type hints would basically be transport and protocol. It would be like read protocol and write, write transport or something. Um, uh, my connection is very choppy, very choppy. Oh, yeah. And so, if there's something, always leave that comment on the... Okay. Yeah, I think I think what we'll do here is um, let's you can we and I really would like this to be it's it would be great if we can get this sort of you know more more to the the, the ideal on the first shot here um, because this is going to be the foundation for the um, you know sort of this arbitrary connections. Um, if you were to take a okay, if you were to if you were to deal with these transport objects, um, I think that would solve our issue here. So you you sound like you're you're familiar with async IO. Is that is that a safe is that a safe assumption to make here? Do you understand async IO? Sahil, can you hear me? I'm simply the document documentation. Are so, you? Oh, you, you. So you've read the documentation. Have you played around with it much? I'm not hearing you. All right. So let's just, you know, we'll keep it with file names yes. for now. Um, mm -hmm. Hello? Can you hear me? All right. Well, we're, I think we're having an internet connection issue, so let's... I think you're Hello? Hello? Yes. We can hear you. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. So, uh, it's, let's see. So, let's, let's just, let's just, um, keep as, um, uh, okay, so... I really would like this to be streams. Okay, so info file stream, info file stream. So let's see, did we get him back? Did he rejoin? Yes, I just rejoined. All right, great. So how do you feel about attempting a stream-based approach? Do you think that this is something that is a good scope for this right now for you? Or do you think, like, because I didn't hear what your response was to your familiarity with, with async IO. Actually, my connection is very poor. I cannot, cannot. Your audio is getting chopped in between, okay. so I just cannot make sense of what right, so. you're saying. Okay, so uh, if you feel, I think uh, you both are lagging. Okay. Oh. <laughs> no, it's probably both of us because I know my internet had been kind of wacky. So, all right. So if you feel comfortable with async IO, um, then attempt a stream based approach um, so and I'll put the links sort of rele relevant links in here um, otherwise maintain current approach of files a path based um, and rename definitions to include prefix for uh, uh, or compressed okay um, so I know I'm writing this down just so that so uh, input file path Um, and then, you know, et cetera, um, make sure, uh, sure to output, um, decompressed slash compressed. So 
So regarding the streams thing, uh, I have a few questions here. Mm -hmm. uh, mainly like compression and decompression can be done in streams, but what about uh, like creating archives? Would it be yes. done in streams as well? Uh, so for uh, compression, decompression. Um, so for archives, uh, uh, if you go with streams, um, then if you go with streams, uh, except uh, streams uh, for inputs to unpack and outputs or inputs to unpack and let's see why so you, streams are always inputs to streams so for archives if you go with streams except streams for uh for uh, the uh, archive to unpack and the uh uh, stream to pack data into um, use uh, paths for directories to um, extract data into and pack data from I would need to like think a bit on it and then implement it because yeah yeah no it's worries not that straightforward. no worries it is not straightforward right and that's why we just spent so much time talking about it um, but uh, you know it's worth it's worth trying to, to figure this out because we sort of uncovered a new concept of the of the streams here um, and uh, and then and, and yeah, we uncovered this concept of streams, and, and uh, I'm not sure if I love this whole stream thing um, because it introduces all sorts of it introduces all sorts of funkiness. But um, I think it's fine. It, it's probably it's probably a necessary evil uh, long term. So uh i think i think it's probably something that's gonna be necessary long term so then this 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 would be at least a good foray into figuring it out so um rename instance for compressed decompressed yeah and so you could you could do this as a stop gap and come back to this later if you wanted to or you could just sort of leave this and we can figure it out at some other point right um so at a minimum we'll submit an issue for this um and go with this but if you if you if you want to go for it then great um that that would be interesting right what um, uh, what i was thinking like uh, what i was thinking was that uh, my uh, my project would be like delayed if i spend too much time on the first part so yeah if i complete the stuff and then come back to it in an iterative exactly process, yeah uh, so it would be much better that i'm really meeting the deadlines and stuff that's so, a good idea that's a good idea great great thinking so, so uh let's submit so let's submit an issue for this let's submit issue to track this um and if you feel like you have time to come back to it uh then do so uh, after project completion Great. All right. Perfect. Um, so, anything else you want to talk about on these? That's it. So, would we be merging it or sort of like leaving it right uh, now? So, let's see. Yeah, that's a good question. So, no, we need to do this first. So, um, so let's make sure that we make sure our definitions are specific enough um, and then we can merge it. All right. And then let's see. So this is let's think. We try to. Uh, this is another linter that we need. Um, but if it's already under the added section, then you don't need to say add it again. Um, so operations for compression and archives. Because uh, you've added this. So added consolidate test cases tutorial, or else we say see this one. We needed to remove the added. Um, so 
All right. Okay. Um, where is... Okay. So now... Okay, wait. No, I was going to comment that. That's why I had that. All right. So, um, Sudhancho, you want to talk about um, psychic clustering model questions and questions on cleanup operations. So what, what questions do you have there? Uh, so I would like to share my screen. Okay, so great. Have Go for it. So is my screen visible? Yes. Oops. Yep. Uh, so what I have actually done is uh, uh, I have actually uh, created a new branch of the accuracy staging. Great. And on top of that, I'm writing this code. So the thing here is uh, if we take a look here, so uh, the uh, scikit model scorer uh, will not work with the clustering models because they don't have the score method. OK. So yeah. what I was planning is in the test scikit, uh, this will actually raise an exception. OK. Sounds good. Yep. So I was thinking maybe uh, should I remove this test? Um, let's see. So. Because, uh, we, we will be testing that in the, so I have written another test. Yeah, you have it all. All the accuracy testing is happening in scores, right? Yep. Okay, yeah. So, so then, I yeah, let's move, remove that, right? No, no, no point in, in having that two places because you'll, you're doing a matrix of the scores and the models, right? Yep. Yeah, so then we, I don't think we need it in the other one. Okay. Great. Uh, So that's it. I will make this pull request too. Great. No need for uh, accuracy in. Uh... And uh, like uh, there are two scorers, like a uh, psychic model scorer and the, the psychic scorers. So should I make a pull request for both of them in the same tier? Uh, can you say that again? Uh, there are actually two scorers, one which uses the model and one uh, which uses the psychic metrics methods. So should I make the uh, pull request for both of these in the same PR? Is the code base largely the same with this abstraction that you've written, kind of like the psychic models? Uh, yes. I mean, I would, uh, like, let's, yeah, let's just put it in, in one PR for, it's already in one branch right now, I assume. Yes. Okay. So okay. if it's no, if it's no work to leave it as it is, it's no work to leave it as uh, in one PR, right? Uh, you, you don't have to do anything to just submit it as one PR. You would just submit it as is. Yes. Okay. Uh, so yeah, if it's if it's already set up like that, let's just do it as one PR, and then we can split it into two if need be. Um, but if not, if it's not, um, you know, if it's already two submitted as two, if if it's one, then let's just do it as one, and then we might decide that we need to split it later. So does that sound good? Yep. All right, great. Um, are we done then? Um, Yes. Uh, oh, oh, questions about cleanup operations. Flower 17. Yep. So, yeah, Flower 17 is also done. I fixed it. Oh, Flower 17. I thought you might fix it during this. All right, great. Um, so, let's go see that. Okay. I haven't pushed the... Oh, you haven't pushed it. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, and should I is doing something dumb, so great. Um, all right. Awesome. Okay. So I'll take a look at Flower 17. Um, so. All right. And then, okay. So this is the next thing I need to do, and then we'll get that to you.
um, and hopefully then the doc test, because I think there's two things right now with possibly doc test issues, actually. Um, oh, we wanted to make sure that the doc test pass on that log time one um, PR, and then we'll merge that. Um, okay, so let me make sure that, let me count this under my ARs here. So, um, okay, so address. Um, all right, and and we have to talk about uh, operations. Yeah. Clean up. So accuracy staging and then PR for a long time. All right, great. Um, so questions about cleanup operations. All right, shoot. Yeah, yeah so the, uh, the, the thing is uh, in the cleanup operation, uh, let's suppose we have a transformation operation. Mm -hmm. So in that we have a lot of operations like log transformation or there are like many transformations on normalization which you can do. So what I was thinking, should I create an op a single operation for each of these, uh, or should I create a single operation and uh, like have some kind of config, uh, give some kind of config to the, the user so user can choose like what, uh, what operation, what specific operation the user want to perform. What specific operation he wants to perform? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, because uh, let's say that they, like, I, I saw like some of the uh, operations, the cleanup operation, and like there are many operations under a specific type of task that you want to perform. Hmm. Okay. Uh, can you give me a concrete example here? Uh, like what would it look like in practice for one one example? So uh, let's say you want to do some kind of transformation to your data. Mm -hmm. So one person may want to use like log transformation. So mm -hmm. just take the log of all the values and transform it that way. Yeah. Or let's say another person wants to do like a square transformation on okay. one of the particular rows and columns to make it uh, uh, the, the scale of the values to be in the same scale, same scale. Mm -hmm. so they may want to perform like square operations so these are actually the same operations right uh, transformation operations so uh, should these uh, operations should be different like should log transformation be a different totally different operation and uh, squaring operation should be a different operation or should we uh, keep them in a single operation and we should give a user uh, some kind of option, uh, like what they want to perform when they want when they're using the operation. I think that this seems like a this seems. I don't quite understand how this relates to the cleanup. Is this a separate question to the cleanup? Uh, no, it's the same. Same question. All right. Um, I th I mean, it sounds to me like these needs to be separate operations. Um, cause if you're thinking about it from the term of like, okay, for example, like, you know, you're doing some pre-processing, right. And, and when are we going to do that, like streamlined create command and stuff like that. Um, so in that, in that case, it seems like, uh, it seems like you would want to have these be, you know, separate operations defined during the create command or something like that. Right. I mean, I, I would think about it in the way where it's like, okay, what is most convenient syntactically for an end user to define? Right. Yeah, but we can have separate operations, so that will be syntactically much less complex. Yeah, I think I would go with that. That that seems like the the answer to go with from from my view, from hearing what you're saying. So let's see. Uh, so let me write so separate operations versus um, uh, operation with uh, uh, 
and actually this kind of begs this is kind of the same it's kind of begs the same question about that those compression operations um and decompression operations um yeah. because in in that case we were doing you know we were accepting the file format as or we we were accepting the extension as the um the compression algorithm like we were choosing the compression algorithm based off the extension um and perhaps we should not be doing that um because then you know yeah you let's see because it's a different compression algorithm which means it's almost like is does that does that should that be a different operation and if this is the way that we're treating this then probably right um because if you were to go to define for example if you're going to make that data flow um so you would either add an input that would be that file type that it needs to switch on like that extension that it needs to switch on or you would add you know you would just add the operation itself right and you wouldn't need to add that separate input for what the, the file type is so those should probably be there each their own operation okay. um i mean and that's not for you to for you to do it but so sahil did you catch that shall I, shall I split them then like three different operations for three different formats yeah i think let's see let me go open that up um i mean and you can also i mean you can always you know create these things in a for loop right you know they they are functions but you can spit these things out in an automated fashion if you wanted to um so let's see format for the compressed output file um yeah i would do open compression class you're already doing this compression class, get compression class thing. So you could basically just have some kind of loop that creates these compress and decompress functions, right? Um, so, and then decorate them with op. So, um, yeah, I think you could do, let's see, I wonder what would this look like? Uh, let me go back to this. Um, yeah, I would, so I would say, I would say that that also says something about, so let's make, let's make these into different, or let's make, uh, compression and decompression operations, uh, for each, uh, file type, or for each, um, uh, algorithm. Uh, so you could create the functions in uh, like via a loop. Uh, uh, so you don't do yeah, do not handwrite each function. Uh, do not like copy paste. I just didn't get the loop part. Okay. Um, so, okay, let me just check it out here and sort of describe what I wanted to show you. Check out. And this is 28. Um, so, say for example, Okay, let's just do decompress. Um, Your screen is not sharing. Oh, it's not sharing. Okay. Oops, thank you. Um, um, God damn it. Supposed to be doing that. All right. So here's the decompress operation. Um, so so what we'll do is 
is um, we're going to create a decompress for, uh, let's see, let's just do our supported compression formats. For format and supported compression formats. Um, for module um, VC2. So, uh, uh, yeah. all right, so extension module, and then we have compress and decompress. Um, so compression class, get compression class. Where should get compression class? And support it for get format non. Okay, so gzip. So this is compression class now. So module, so compression class. In supported compression formats, so you have compress and decompress. So you compress a extension file in a certain Uh, extension. All right, so, um, so we now, um, okay, and compress, decompress, RB, RB, da, da, da. okay, great. Um, so then we just get rid of the file format here. Um, and we get rid of that, get compression class, okay. So, op, inputs, outputs. Okay, great. Um, so you can basically say now, so say you wanted to do, um, let's see, actually compression class. So you got to do, you have to, we have to have one of these. Okay, so there's closure issues here. So we need to take it, we need to make a function that says make uh, compress, um, and we give it the extension and we give it the uh, compression class, right? And it will make this compression function for us, right? So this guy will return um, uh, compress. Um, and then we do, you know, make uh, decompress. Um, and then this returns decompress. Um, and now in this way, um, in this in this way, we can now go through and we can say, um, let's see. So this would be, uh, where's that stuff from? Scikit model scikit. Um, where is this? So we go through our file format so we have our make compress and make decompress okay now so my screen is slightly too small so sorry uh, make compress and make decompress right um and we can say that uh we need to go through each one and we can say decompress equals make decompress and then we pass this. So now we have a decompress function. Um, and we have a, a compress function. So we have a compress function and we have a decompress function. In this loop, we create a decompress function and a decompress function for each file format. Um, and then we decorate them with op. <clears throat> and we say, um, you know, the file or the function name is extension, um, you know, compress, um, 
Uh, and so the result of this is that um, at the global scope of this file, um, uh, GZ compress uh, gets set to the out to the come on now return value of make compress uh, wrapped by by op right so and then we do because we do op so we take make compress and so we we create the compression function so create the compression function and wrap it with the op decorator to make it an operation slash operation implementation. Okay, and then we do the same thing for decompress. And we change the outputs, you know, appropriately. So input file path, right? So input file path, input file path, make decompress uh, output. So what were we saying? What were we saying? I think we said that we were going to put the um, the output here. So output file path. Where are we going to put the output? There's really no point because it is an input already. So if you had a let's yeah let's not do let's not do these as outputs let's see what we said in the notes um because if you do them as outputs so if you had for example a file or if you had for example a operation that created a temporary file you would have a cleanup operation that removes a temporary file but you wouldn't want to create a cleanup you wouldn't want to write a cleanup operation that removes a decompressed file um because that just wouldn't be you wouldn't want to do that um because then you're just going to remove all your decompressed files right and you know maybe you don't want to do that to all of them so um but you probably you definitely do want to remove all your temporary files right um i think we wrote something contradictory to this i want to make sure that we don't have that so um, this we don't that otherwise this one make sure to output compressed decompressed yeah so so let's see output file path input file path So, definition stir. Okay, so input compressed, and then we'd say extension. And now I'm not sure if I'm still an extension, right? File uh, extension. Okay, yes, great. Um, And this is decompressed. Um, and let's do create definitions. Uh, compressed slash decompress uh, uh, file pass for this format. Okay. All right. So now we can say the compress operation takes or output is a decompress file path and it's input or let's see or no input is a decompress file path and output is a compress file path and then we flop them down here. So input is a compressed file path and output is a decompressed file path um, and then we have extension compress and extension decompress right so this is how we create them in a loop so i just didn't know about the set attribute once so i was a bit confused thanks 
Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, the set attribute, that's a, that's a good one. Um, so I'll just, um, cause then we know all the supported compression formats ahead of time. Um, so we will do this. Um, okay, great. Um, supported compression formats. All right, great. Um, Um, all right, let's see. I'm just going to post this as a diff. Um, really? Can you just do the one file, please? Up. It puts, oh, I lost a parenthesis somewhere. Okay. Um, Oh. Uh, oh. Yeah, that's no good. All right, great. Um, let's see, does that help at all? Yeah. So let me post this diff, and I'll, I'll, I'll post a diff. I issue or PR comment. Uh, uh, let's see. What one are we on? Uh, what PR are we on here? Okay, 11.29, GHPR comment, Let me do this. Could not resolve to a pull request with the number of 1120, oh, 1128. All right, um, and this is the um, example or creating uh, operations for each uh, format with a loop. Um, OK. Um, and then we were also posted just Where is operation compression? What in the hell? All right. Oh, that's why. Okay. Let's just make sure these showed up here. And then so we decided that we're going to do that for the um, other ones or for the ones that originally started this discussion. And we're going to do them for this uh, tar archive thing. Um, OK, great. And it showed up in the comments. So all right, cool. Um, anything else from anybody today? I know we are over on time again, so. Um, all the checks on the evaluating of this in PR passed. Evaluating. And you can start merging those. Okay. Oops, where am I going? Evaluating. Nice. Oh, yay. Great, because that has the test cases in it. Perfect. All right. Oh, very exciting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's merge this guy then. Um, 
evaluating model performance. OK, you won. And we just took a look at this. OK, great. Alright, um, it's still, oh yeah, okay, we're going to keep that one a separate, okay, what are we doing here, remove, da da da, okay, require plans, remove, and a single test, okay, um, let me clean this up one real quick here, and then I um, won't take any more of you guys' this time, so, alright, great, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to rebase the commits so that we remove, uh, like, you know, this type of stuff. Um, and then I'll push it in a master. So, great. Um, and let me note that here that we did that today. Great work, guys. Thank you. All right. Um, thanks, everyone. And I'll uh, talk to you. So, oh, do you guys want to meet on Friday or no? Mm, yes, it would be good so that we can get things in. All right. Cool. All right. We'll. Well, um, well, okay, wait, actually, no, I, no, I said, so why don't we, why don't we try to handle anything? Cause I just realized I probably, I forgot. Okay. So I can't, I, I probably won't be able to be here on Friday. Um, I might be, but let's try to bring things up, uh, over, try to shoot things over Gitter. Um, and then I'll try to handle them, uh, in, you know, at time of, so. Uh, and if we do find that we really need it, then then we'll, I'll, I'll see. I'll see. But uh, I'm, I mean, I just may not be able to. So, all right. Um, thanks, everyone, and have a good one. Bye. See you.